Hey, Sam friends. Welcome to the Joyous Stamping with Rachel. I'm Rachel Kuhn and it's Wonderful Wednesday. Today I have a really fun card I want to share with you for Christmas that was inspired when I was wrapping presents this week. Go to hold on, flip, and we'll get started. All right, make sure you guys can see everything. Okay, I recently adjusted my stand so it's all out of the way that I usually like it. So hopefully that looks great for you guys. If you're here, I would love to hear what you want or say or think. Um, I'm live on my Facebook page and I will repost this on YouTube later, but I love comments on YouTube. So please, please comment on there as well. And I will respond to them within a timely matter. All right, so wonderful Wednesday. I love Wednesdays, they are wonderful. It's halfway through the week and they are a fun time to do extra things or share things with you guys. Um, so for wonderful Wednesday, for the month of December, I'm sending those who order on a Wednesday a wonderful gift, which are the cute stars. There is some um, embellishments that are retiring really soon and they have adhesive on the back and they are, are so cute. Um, so be sure to order today or next Wednesday. I think you only have two Wednesdays left, maybe three Wednesdays for the rest of the month. So order, order on a Wednesday and I'll send you that extra little gift. All right, so today's card is so fun. This is the one we're actually going to make and I'm going to talk about it, but it's super shiny because you can see the reflection in it. So I apologize for that. But this card was is made out of gift wrapping paper, Christmas gift wrapping paper. Um, I was wrapping gifts this week and I was like, oh, this paper is just so pretty. I wish I could make a card out of this. And then I was like, why can't I? Wrapping paper is paper. And if you're like me, you cut off the whole big chunk and then you have leftovers. So I had just leftovers of paper that I was like, huh, it's too small to actually wrap a present with, but I totally could make a card with this. And so I did. Um, and then I have these two other ones that I use just Stampin' Up! DSP to give you an idea. So if you don't have wrapping paper that you love, like I do, that you can still use designer series paper to make like a gift-like card. And we just used a simple tag to attach to it and it looks like a present. Um, I love the idea of matching it completely so I can give this card to someone that I've wrapped the gift in and it will be so matchy. This DSP actually really matches well with um, like a goodie plate that I found at Target even. So I love, I love things to coordinate. So that's why these will be super fun and just extra thoughtful I think. Um, this paper for the DSP is actually retired. It was a celebration paper but Stampin' Up! has a lot of fabulous DSP you can use to choose from to make it look like a present as well. Okay, let me go ahead and throw these to the side and I will show you how to make this card with just a couple tips. We'll get you going. All right, so I first wanna show you the wrapping paper. So you can see what it looks like. Here it is, this is Costco wrapping paper. It's a little bit thicker than normal and it is double sided, which is a lot like our designer series paper, which made it really fun. And it just has really great shine to it. So I need to pick out which one of these I want and I've cut them down to three and three fourths by five is the measurement I'm using. And I think I actually might make it, let's see. Should we try this one? This one has some fun Christmas sayings that could look like really awesome wrapping paper too. So let's use, I think, this one today. All right, we'll set those other aside. Then you need to have a matching piece of basic white or any cardstock that you have a lot of that you can put just underneath it. It's not gonna be seen, but it's gonna help make this stable. So I'm gonna use a little bit of seal on each of my corners. You could use liquid glue if you are confident that it won't ruin your wrapping paper. I use liquid glue when I did my DSP one, but it's totally up to you. Okay, so just put that on there to make it match. If it feels like it's a little bit over, you can go ahead and use that in your paper trimmer, but that looks pretty good. And that's gonna make it so it's sturdy because wrapping paper is very flexible and you need to have something that doesn't bend as easily 
and the cardstock to the back just does that to it. I even used it on our DSP though. Um, DSP is also a little bit more lighter than cardstock and I just needed it to have that extra thickness and that's my tip to you to add that to it. And you'll see why here in just a minute. Um, and then we have our smoky slates, what we will then attach this part to, which I like smoky slate because it has that kind of silver look here that will match with the coloring on this one. And then I chose a Mary Merlot for my card base because I do not use this color very often. <laughs> and so I don't have very much DSP with it even. And so it goes really great though with these gold and silver tones and I thought what a better time to use this color than now because it doesn't have to match with the DSP. My tip however though because this does not coordinate with any of our ink per se that you want to then use your ink that matches your card base. So I use the Mary Merlot ink for our little tag here. Okay. So that's our card base and then you'll have a basic white also for the inside because this is a dark card base and you want to make sure you have somewhere to write just like that inside and I've die cut this awesome little tailored made tag which stitches it cuts out the hole has these little edges to it it's like the best best die if you don't have those dies handy and still want to make a tag you could just cut out a rectangle and grab a hole punch and create a tag that way totally up to you. Let's go ahead and stamp this one. This is the only time we're stamping. Oh, and let me show you the stamp set we're using. This is the Peaceful Deer stamp set, but you honestly could use whatever fits to the size of your tag. Um, I liked it because it has a cute sending love and peace this season, and it fit really nicely with my tag. Um, I could have done like a Merry Christmas on there, let's celebrate, even from all of us. It would have been a really great one to fit on the tag or whatever stamp set you have. So this is a very flexible and easy card to adapt to supplies that you have in your craft room. All right, so this is the Mary Merlot ink. We're going to open that up and we'll get ready to stamp it. I did put my foam mat underneath it so that way I can make sure my stamping is nice and even with my photopolymer. And I can see where I'm going. I'm going to go ahead and ink it up. And when you stamp this size, at least, just be mindful not to have the words on that bottom stitch. The sending's okay, but the season, it looks better when it's on top of the stitch line. Perfect. Turned out great. We'll close up our ink. Set it aside. And there's our tag. All right. So we glued this to our basic white. Now we can get out our ribbon. This ribbon is currently unavailable, but I just love it, so I had to use it. Um, we do have other gold ribbon you can use. This is the Shimmer Ribbon. And what you're gonna do is, I always just eyeball it, but I did actually measure it for you guys this time, so you would have an actual number. But what I do is I go and I lay it across, and I go about an inch over on each side, which just happens to be about six inches. So there's one ribbon there, and then I do the same thing for the cross ribbon. And this one I measured actually out to be about five inches. So five and six inches of ribbon just cut. Then we're going to attach our horizontal ribbon first, or the one that's going across. And what we do is we flip this part over and we use just a little bit of sill on both of the ends. Try to make it as cross as you can. Sometimes it's not completely level, but you can play with it still. Okay, then we're gonna put it where we want it on looking on the front side and I'll find my sticky spot and I'll tuck this part of my ribbon, the end, to it. And I'll pull this one so it's a little tight but not making the paper bow and lay it on there. See how that worked out? Attached there. Next, we need to attach this ribbon to our tag. So we're gonna thread it through the bottom of the hole. And you just pinch it and pull it through like that. Then we're going to use this end of our ribbon and thread it through underneath our center ribbon like that. Okay. Now we can flip it over and attach or use our adhesive. Seal plus is what I'm using today. And then again, I'm going to flip it back over so I can see what I'm doing and get ready to make sure it looks like it's straight. Tuck one end in. And if you only want to do one end at a time, that totally works as well. 
and by attaching your adhesive. Super cute. Okay, then you can move this along anywhere along this one, but you, it stops right here at that center one, which I love. It kind of keeps it where it needs to be. If you're worried about this and want to make sure it's angled just right, you can put a dimensional on the back of it and attach it there as well. Okay, now we're going to use our, our dimensionals to attach it to our smoky slate. If you're worried about your ends of your ribbon, you can put a dimensional over them. And that will just help secure those so that they don't come off or loose. And I would put at least one more on. If you want to make it even more secure and you love dimensionals, you can add one to each corner as well. Just depends on how much you like to use dimensionals and if you have a lot in your craft room. There are two kinds of people, one that use one dimensional per project and one that, and the others that use like a hundred. <laughs> okay, a little bit less, but you get the idea. There's no right or wrong way, just a preference. Then we're going to hover it over our smoky slate and have it line up. So it looks like it's sitting on top. That looks great. We'll grab our base back out. And I like to use liquid glue for this step because you can see it's uneven now that we have that ribbon there. So I just go ahead and put a little bit of liquid glue around the outside. And I usually do one through the center. We'll flip it and match it over. And while that dries, we can make our bow. Oh, that is looking so pretty. I'm loving, loving this wrapping paper for this one. Okay, so let's grab our ribbon back. I usually keep it on my spool whenever I make a bow. I take out enough for me to work with though, and I'll make two bunny ears, and one will go over the other and pull through. Maybe, sorry, my hands are really cold today. We just had a nice, um, rainstorm yesterday here in California and it just creates like a chill in the air and I try not to have our heat on because it just dries up the air and makes it hard hard to breathe here I feel like with heat on so cold hands it is today there we go so you created this cute little bow love it and you can just play with it make it the size that you want but we do need to add a glue dot to the back on the knot, so you grab your knot, stick it down, pinch it, and then you can pull it off. Then the glue dot is going to attach to the, actually the tag itself and not to the ribbon, but we're going to make it look like it's part of the ribbon going through. Can I see how that, how that looks? And then we can angle it if we want a little bit differently. And like I said, you can stick a dimensional. In fact, let's do that just so you can see. This one is a free hanging tag there. This one will put a dimensional on the back and that way it'll just be placed exactly where we want it and not move. And still have that pop-up look to it though. I was gonna add, add our basic white for the inside because this is a dark base card. I like to put four little pieces of seal in each corner and one in the center. Just makes it last a lot longer when you don't use it all over and it doesn't need to have all over adhesive perfect grab our bone folder and let's crease this score line and there we go we have the cutest cutest christmas card using our leftover wrapping paper and i just love it and we just added a cute little tag and one little saying and if you don't have wrapping paper, you totally could also use your DSP that you have in stock. I have on my blog all the measurements for these cards. So if you want to recreate these, you can. Um, all right, you guys, I think that's it for Wonderful Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining me. And hopefully you find this like super mind-blowing and awesome and wonderful. I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of it, but I was pretty excited when the thought came to me this week. All right, you guys, happy stamping, everyone. Goodbye.